Welcome to a new update in which we are not going to discuss price action, but we're going to do a fundamental video, which is about Xtify. And it's going to be a tutorial of this new wallet in which we're going through everything that you need to know about the actual wallet. But before we're going to continue, do not forget to subscribe for, on the, to this YouTube channel. Do not forget to like this YouTube update and check out my Twitter and Instagram where you can find daily content on the market. Also, today is a very special giveaway day, so definitely check out the Twitter. There's a pinned tweet which will tell you everything you need to know if you want to join the giveaway. And then next, today is also the day that Max Verstappen will become world champion. So, let's look at why we are making a tutorial right now. Well, there are different wallets. First of them is a MetaMask. And actually, XDeFi is one of the tools that could be a competitor of MetaMask. And I think there will be multiple wallets and you can also see that different chains are using different wallets. So Solana is also using a different uh, wallet at this point. And I think there will be just be multiple ones um, and XDFR might be one of the competitors of MetaMask, which is one of the biggest at this point. So in this video, we're going to show how to set up a wallet and I'm going to show the main features of it as well. What is XDFI? It's a browser based crypto wallet but bring some new features to the table compared to MetaMask. The developers behind the actual wallet have tried their best to cater every it towards users who are mostly active on chain. Browser based wallets are really useful as you can make transactions fast and easy. Some of the key features of XDFI are one, multi-chain support, second, a nice breakdown of transaction details, an NFT section, in-app permission overview, and more, which I'll cover later on when we go through the actual tutorial or the actual wallet. This wallet has been audited by Kudelski Security, and their overall conclusion was that the wallet was well designed and implemented. So that's enough of a introduction to the actual product. Let's head towards the actual tutorial in which we go through the entire wallet. Currently, the wallet is only available for Chrome and Brave, although it has been stated that eventually it will be available on Firefox, Firefox 2. So how can you actually install it? Well, you can find the wallet in the Chrome store and add it to your extensions. Or you can go to the website, which is xtify.io, in which you can easily click on download and then you're getting continue towards your Chrome account. Then second, when it's getting added to your uh, browser, you will see it on the top right corner in which you can start using your actual account. In this case, you can start creating your own account as you have to get started, which brings you towards a new page where you can have two options, which is create XTFI wallet or restore XTFI wallet or importing one of the wallets that you have. When you want to create a wallet, you have to click on agree first, then you have to click on create XTFI wallet. They will ask for a password afterwards in which you can put one in must contain a number and special character after that you will get a seed phrase used to restore your wallet in case your device is destroyed or you want your wallet on another device never ever share this with others um, write these words down and make sure you keep them safe somewhere do not lose them and we're not going to show it for this wallet of course but that is after this screen um, to check if you wrote them down the wallet will ask you the first four words put them down in put them in to continue give a name to your wallet and now you have set up your xtify wallet successfully make sure that you back up your xtify wallet password recovery code uuid and private key gson file the recovery code uuid is a handy tool that is used to recover your xtify wallet so when you finish setting up your wallet you will get to the next screen which is the question whether you want to make xtify your default browser wallet this option makes you uh, makes gives XDFI the top priority above MetaMask or any other wallet that's out there. Currently, we are not going to do it, but if you want to do that, you can definitely do it here. Then the next feature is um, the fact that you have different chains that you can actually choose, as uh, XDFI in itself is a multi-chain. Um, this screen shows you all the chains that are currently supported. At the moment, these are the only ones. However, they are all working on implementing some more, which are Avalanche, Solana, Phantom, Near, Polkadot, and XDAI. Some of the networks are coming 
before the end of the year. All relevant networks are enabled at the start. All irrelevant networks are disabled. Um, so I would leave it at this and I click on complete. Now you have done your first setting up your wallet and the next chapter will be about exploring XDeFi. When you finish setting up the actual wallet, you can go to the top right corner where you can set up the, uh, or where you can actually open your wallet by clicking on the actual icon of the XDeFi. It will pop up in the top right corner. And when you click on the actual octopus in the middle, it will pop towards a full screen wallet overview. So you can send, receive and buy cryptocurrencies right from the start screen. That also has a nice overview of your holdings with visuals. As you can see, you can search for certain coins and filter on chains. In the top left of the corner, you will be able to switch from networks, which you can see here right now it's on Ethereum, but we can swap towards Binance Smart Chain or whatever we want to do. Like was said earlier, only certain chains are supported. Then moving to the right is a tab that allows you to switch through wallet. We might know this from a MetaMask 2. This is wallet number one, which is called Hands. Um, followed by a drop down menu with more advanced options, which will be discussed at a later point in time. If you check out the bottom, we are now in the home tab that shows the breakdown of your portfolio in tokens. If we go to the next one, it is a picture frame. Here are your NFTs um, displayed just like an open sea. The art and graphics of the NF NFT are visible. You can organize them by dragging them in your wallet. But right now we are not having any NFT. It's a pretty cool feature if you are into NFTs. Personally, I do not have any in this wallet. Then next to the NFT overview is a tab that shows you all your on-chain activity. Um, it will show you a detailed overview of all your past transactions and you can use this to keep track of all your actions. Then finally, we've got a nice um, uh, tab where you can have an overview of all your wallets and it's also a place where you can create new accounts seamlessly. Going over the one that we've discussed just now, uh, we've also got the drop down menu, which we can see here and it pops up on the right. We just are going to discuss every tab that we have here. The first one is the contact tab. As you can see, there is a contact tab where you can have a list of all your friends, uh, which is an address book. You can have a list of all your friends or whatever addresses you want to save there. It's a nice feature if you want to maintain a list of all the, uh, of all the addresses with a name. Then under wallet management, you can connect to a hardware wallet whatever it is, or importing an existing wallet and downloading a backup file of your XDeFi wallet. All these things speak for themselves. I think no explanation is needed here. Then the next one is probably the most important one. It's the XDeFi settings tab. It's the, um, here you can make adjustments when it comes to security, chain management and currency settings. The real kicker is below, which is the DAP settings tab. It's DAP permission management. Here you can revoke smart contract approvals and token allowances you've made in the past. This is really important as it improves the security and reliability of your wallet. It's important to frequently revoke token allowance, allowance as these are open for others to exploit. People with bad intentions have the ability to drain your wallet via, via such approvals. Hence, it is best to revoke them when you're done with them. This can easily be done in this menu. I would not mess with the DAPS provider settings if you're not an advanced user, but that all can be done here. So when we're going back towards the actual outlook of the wallet, there's also another fine feature for the XDeFi wallet in itself, which is if you want to send something, there's a new mode, which is only in XDeFi, which is called the Ape mode. This feature uses a gas algorithm to ensure transactions get into the next block without wasted gas. Users can toggle Ape mode in on to get a speed edge for the most important transaction, even when a network is congested. Well, that is an intro towards um, XDeFi and has been showing you what is all possible with XDeFi at this point. In the future, you will be also be able to make swaps and cross-chain swaps all within the wallet. The cross-chain swaps are powered by TorChain and its supported chains. They are also working on an in-app Ethereum Terra bridge. Furthermore, they are finalizing the Avalanche integration, so soon you will be able to use the XDeFi wallet on Avalanche. Other features that are being worked on are the ability to export private keys and the wormhole. 
So as a conclusion, I hope that this was a tutorial that helped you a lot. I think I've covered the most important parts. I personally really like the fact that you can easily revoke permissions from within the app. And furthermore, Xtify makes it easier to maneuver in a crypto space that is increasingly interoperable. You will be able to manage your funds across chains with one single wallet that is more user friendly. And I expect that next to MetaMask, Xtify will gain a lot of adoption, but also multiple wallets will be integrated into the crypto ecosystem. That's the update for today. I hope you have enjoyed it today. I'll be back tomorrow with the live stream and another market update. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel and I'll see you again soon.